Well, welcome to another three-point edit VSE tutorial. This time we're going to look at chroma keying in the VSE. Now a lot of people have asked me, how do we do chroma keying in the VSE? And I usually say, go to the compositor, it's got great keying tools. And just route the, that scene strip um, back through the VSE. But you can build a toy keyer in the VSE if you're really dedicated and here's how. So I have a background clip, my kid sitting by the beach here or by the water on holiday. And I've got a clip from Hollywood Camera um, Clips. They've got a whole bunch of test chroma key clips. What I'm going to do is suggest that we first of all start by making a meta strip. So control G to make a meta strip of our source footage. Now this meta strip is what will have the key effect applied to it. And in future, if you want to change the contents uh, um, of your key or the source of your key, you simply tab into the meta strip and change this shot. Tab back out and all the effects will still be applied. You may have to change them if your green screen isn't perfect. First thing we're going to do is add an effect strip. Going to add a blur, Gaussian blur strip to this. And we're going to change the blur. Now we're not going to add any blur effect, but we are going to add a modifier. First thing we're going to do here is add a hue correct modifier. And the first thing we're going to do is change the value. So we're going to actually change the value of our key color. So we're going to uh, highlight the key color, here it is. And we're going to reduce everything else to black. So everything that isn't our key color goes to black. Like this. That should mean that we have a hole cut here. Then we're going to go to saturation and pull out all of the saturation, so all of the colors here. We could pull all of these down or we could just delete them like this. Delete, delete, and pull the last one down. Delete this, tedious, delete. I wish we could just group select these control points, uh, box select and delete them. Anyway, so that's now a black and white image. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add another strip modifier. I'm going to add a curve and we're going to reverse this so that the white is opaque and the black becomes see-through. So we do that. Now you may be able to see some noise in here. If I zoom right in, I'm not sure what the YouTube compression shows you, but you may be able to see some noise. So we can increase the contrast to get rid of that noise. And you may have noticed that some of our edges we're deleted as well, so you can change your contrast curve to retain the edges and try and eliminate the noise in the middle, which we we don't want because we want to be able to see through. Uh, we don't want to be able to see through the middle of her head. So anyway, we've established a curve now for our key and try to retain some of those um, hairs on the side of her head. Next thing we'll do is duplicate this. Shift D and duplicate that gauze up. Now that blur is still attached to the background. Oh, first of all, we'll change the name of the, the original one. So we'll change its name to Key Master. Enter. And this one we'll call Key Edge. It's important we name them so that we can select the right one later. Now I'm going to change the blend type here to alpha under so it gets hidden and this one will be alpha under once we've finished with it. So I'm just going to look at changing this curve and um, hue value so that we retain a bit more of the hair. along the side there. Oops. If we go down too far, we are not getting rid of the green. We want everywhere it has to be black where we want to see through. So you can see as I change this curve I get more or less hair. And on the curve I can make that a bit finer so we can see a bit more of that hair. But we're going to use these two components slightly differently. 
Okay, so that's taking care of those two key passes. Now the next thing I'm going to do is select the meta strip at the bottom, Shift A and add another effect, this time a transform effect. We're, you know, we can't actually use the transform. I'm just using the transform effect in this case because it stays attached to the meta strip. But you can't use it to resize because it won't resize the key, unfortunately. Now the next thing we want to do is add a mask modifier. Mask. Scroll down here. Now it's a strip mask. Which strip will we choose? Well, because it goes underneath, we're going to first of all use the edge as our strip. So edge, ignore all those other ones. Key edge, like that. And you can see her wispy green hair. Now it's not supposed to be wispy and green, of course. So let's modify that. So we'll add a color balance. And we're going to Add some minus green. This is let's see, whoops, more of the white values. We're trying to negate that green um, imbalance there. So we're going opposite to the green. It's a bit hard to see. So let's change the key here so we can actually see what we're looking at over a background. We'll go alpha over and make this one uh, alpha under. There we go. And now we're looking at the background. So, can we see the hair in the background? Does it look particularly green? That's what, don't worry about the face, that's what we're going to do with the other key channel. So, going, whoops, select the correct track here. We're going back to our key, we want to get rid of that key, key green on the hair. Looks quite good, I think. Might be a bit dark, so we'll lighten up a little bit. There, I think. Perhaps it's getting a bit of bleed from the middle. There we go. Lighten that up. Hair tends to be a bit more see through. Alright. So, yes, I know she looks a bit weird, but the hair should be roughly correct. Okay, so we're going to duplicate this as well. Shift D, duplicate that up. We might get rid of this color balance. We don't want it to look like that. And we want to change which strip we're going to take for our key. So we're going to get rid of that. Select a different key. We want to use the key master. So we're going to go key master. Like this. It should be alpha over. Looks like our key master is retaining too much hair. So let's pull that out. Oops. Get rid of that point. Get rid of some control points here. see the foreground map we can tell if we look at this where the green is I'm clicking and dragging on the clip that um solos the clip in other words it just means that that's the only thing you're looking at so I could also there we go less green in there less bleed through of that key channel I'm giving it more contrast Play this through. Now, if we want to play it through in real time, we can turn on AV Sync and it will skip through the frames more quickly, but you get to see it playing back. If you want to render all of those frames into the buffer, you turn on No Sync, hit Play, it will play through and buffer the frames. And wait till it gets to the end. And we can go back to the front and it'll just play straight through.
So, there you go. That's how you make a Kia in the VSE. It's not a great Kia. Much better job if you go to the, uh, to the um, compositor. Uh, here's one I prepared earlier. That's what she looks like. And that's after the key and the color balancing. As I said, if you um, want to use an alternate shot in here, tab into this shot, add a, a different shot. So we would have a look at put that over the top, for example. Tab out. This all looks a bit weird until you grab it and drag it. And of course, if you want to make it longer, it will retain that other shot underneath. You can see this other purple bar in here. That shows you where the other, the other shot actually goes to. This hasn't updated the contents yet. Let's see why is that? that should look like that. Oh, because it's remembering all those frames that I put in from before. Refresh Sequencer has updated those. So you can see those color decisions that I made for the previous clip are not rock correct anymore. So I would go into my master key, scroll down, look for the hue correct, change to the value, move that around until I'm eliminating everything that looks wrong. Shot. Maybe that's, I'll hide that, press H key, yes. So it's, my primary key is, I mean, it's not great, let's face it, it's not terrific, but you know, it's a start. If you're, um, if you're doing just a headshot that you just recorded of yourself against green um, as a tutorial or something like that, this would probably work reasonably well. I'll page turn that track back on. Pull out some of that correction. Now maybe we would correct it more to blue because the back because of the background. Perhaps the foreground strip also needs a modifier, color balance. Give that a bit of blue as well. Just a little in there. Of course we're changing our foreground a little bit too now, which is less than ideal. Change our key edge. Curve will be all wrong. And there's this particular dark shade up here in the top of the, the green screen, which we don't want, so we key that out a bit. Go back, go a hue, and go a bit. Oh, green, I don't know why that's green. There we go. So, there we go. It's quite uh, multi purpose, you can change things quite easily, you get a reasonable key. If it's just a headshot, it's probably better. And uh, trying to do these kinds of keys, you really would use the uh, compositor for that. Anyway, another three point edit tutorial this time doing uh, VSE Chroma Key. It's not what it's built for, but you can do it anyway. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.